All right, for today's purple to black belt class, we got a few things that are on the the, uh, the plan. First of all, we're going to do some striking, right? Working on our, our punches and just kind of some of the small details that you know you tend to overlook as you as you're practicing your punches, right? Where you're just not focusing on the right thing. We're going to be talking about a couple of those little things together. Right, so that's one thing. We're going to be doing a little bit of practice on kata kick two, right? Continuing to refine that, right? Real mastery of a skill doesn't happen from doing it once for like an hour really intensely. It comes from kind of consistent and constant practice, trying to be brilliant in, in these basic skills of doing your roundhouse kick and your side kick and your spinning hook kick, which is not so basic, but that's okay. Right, and then we're gonna talk about maintaining our, compo our composure over, well, over a long period of time, right? When pressure builds up, right? You know, first date's gotten easy, it gets harder and harder over time. Um, so we're gonna be working on that, but let's get started with some warm ups, and then we'll take it from there. All right, now that we're ready to start class, we're gonna get going with our warm up, right? Warm ups are super important to keep our body healthy, loosen up our muscles, loosen up our joints, get them ready to move without, you know, injuring ourselves, right? So we're gonna be doing four moves. Each one is 30 seconds, so pretty straightforward. We're gonna start off with some jumping jacks, ready, set, go. So you do your jumping jacks, right? Make sure you're getting your hands up nice and high. Loosen up your shoulders, not just your feet. Elevate your heart rate a little bit. Get breathing, get moving. All right, just keep going, All right? You go at your own speed. If you're ready to go faster, because you've already been active today, great. If you need to go a little bit slower, right? There's some modifications you can do for this. All right, jumping jacks aren't the best for you, but that's okay. We're gonna move on to the next thing. We're gonna do some push-ups, right? Now, a few different ways to do push-ups. Big thing on your push-up, make sure you get all the way down, chin or chest to the floor. Right, so we're gonna get started. Ready, set, and go. As you do these, right, you may do it a couple different ways, right? I'm gonna cut in some video of other ways to do push-ups. The big goal is you do your push-ups, just make sure you get that full range of motion. So if you do maybe five to 10 of them with your legs straight, and then the rest of your legs bent, that's fine. The important thing is get that full range of motion and make sure you feel like it's a little bit of a challenge, but definitely something you can handle, right? And good, we're all done with push-ups. Ready to go for the next thing. We're gonna be doing some knees with our back leg. Let me show you one or two. It's just like a front kick, only I don't extend. I come up with my knee and I come back. Come up with my knee and come back. All right, so it doesn't matter which leg you do. Make sure you're using your back leg though. Ready, set, and go. 30 seconds. It's helpful in martial arts to breathe out as you strike out. Helps you to generate more power. Also helps you to be more relaxed. Right? And because you're more relaxed, you're less likely to hurt yourself. Right? You get more repetitions in, so you're burning more calories, getting stronger, really, very valuable, so good, all right. Switch your legs. We're doing the exact same thing. We're kneeing with our back leg. Ready, set, and go. All right, now for some reason, I'm actually gonna turn a little bit so you can see. Right, it's not looking to be super aggressive. And because this is kind of warm up, I wanna make sure that I have my base foot flat on the floor. I wanna be stable, right? Um, especially if you're on a surface that you know, don't have 100% sure footing on, right? You don't want to go too high. You don't want to lean back. You don't want to challenge yourself. It's a warm up. Good, all right, and that's 30 seconds of those knees. All right, so we're all done with warm ups. Let's get into the main part of the class where we work on curriculum. All right, let's get started with some punches today, right? So set up in your fighting stance, getting right to it. We're gonna be doing our jabs and our crosses. All right, we're gonna do a few kind of the easy way and then we're gonna start adding a little bit of uh, challenge into it. So start off just your, your lead hand jab, your left hand, ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good, okay, switch your legs. Same thing the other side, your right jab. Ready again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good, switch. Okay, so now we're just doing our right cross, going kind of fast. Hopefully you can keep up with me. Ready, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
eight, nine, ten, and switch. Coming around with our <clears throat> left cross. Ready, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good, and switch. Okay, so we're gonna just do those same two punches, but we're gonna talk a little bit about our footwork for each one. When we do our jab, you can see this one pretty well from the side. It's that small step and recover. Small step and recover. Right? So I'm looking for that. Make sure you take that step. It adds power. It adds range. Makes your jab much more effective. Here we go. Try and keep up. Ready? One, two, three, four. You can see I'm stepping. Hopefully you're stepping. Three, two, one, and done. Switch your legs. Same thing the other side. Moving fast. Make sure you step. Ready? One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good, and switch. So, one of the tricks to this is making sure you can do it right, stepping, doing the punch correctly, while still doing it pretty quick. So, that's what we're going through right now. You'll see now when I throw my cross, I'm really turning my body. Right? So, if you watch me from the side, you can see my hip turn, you can see my shoulder turn, you can see my foot turn. All those things have to happen as you throw your cross, right? Hip, shoulder, foot, knee, but not your head. Ready, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Switch, same thing the other side. Hopefully you're turning well. Ready, and one, two, make sure you turn. Three, make sure you turn. Four, five, six, seven, Eight, nine, ten. Good, and switch. Okay, now we're gonna do our jab cross. I'm gonna show it to you from the side. Good, coming right at you. Now, you might have noticed when I do this, there's the step, twist, then reset back. Super common mistakes, people try and go step, reset, twist, reset. As if you're doing the two punches independently, which is how you would do the two punches independently, but we're doing it as a combination. So it's step, twist, reset, right? We're gonna try and go a few slow, and then we're gonna go a little bit faster. Good luck trying to keep up. Ready? And one, two, three, four, five, good. Now, if you can keep up with me and still do it right, that's the important thing, doing it the right way, good. We're gonna go faster. As we go faster, challenge yourself to maintain that same footwork and twisting your body, right? Fast and wrong is still wrong. If you fall behind me by one or something like that, you can always do an extra one while I start talking again, right? But try and challenge yourself to do it right. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten more. One, to be fast. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Switch your legs. Okay, we'll do a few kind of slow. Ready? One, step and twist and reset. Two, three, four, five. Okay, now we're gonna do fast ones again. Make sure you're turning. Force yourself to turn. Force yourself to step. It's easy to cheat when you're doing it by yourself, but you're only cheating yourself then. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten more. One, go faster. Two, three, beat me if you can. Four, five, one to twenty. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right. It's pretty good. Pretty good. So we've got our jab cross. Got some good speed there. I started changing up the combination a little bit. So this time, I'm gonna call for a combination and you're gonna do it. So I could do jab cross. Can you do a jab cross? I might say jab jab cross, <laughs> right? You can do jab jab cross, right? The thing that we're looking for is you listen the right way right away. Do the correct combination at the correct time. Here we go. Ready? Jab jab. Jab, 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 cross, 
jab, cross, jab, jab, cross, jab, jab, cross, 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 jab, cross. Switch your legs. Same basic idea. Do the punches I call for. Ready? This in the right way, right away. Jab. Jab, jab. Jab, cross. Jab, cross. 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 Jab, jab, cross. Cross, jab. Cross, jab. This is good if they're backing away from you. Hit them with a cross. And you're like, oh, you're trying to get away? I got you. Ready? Cross, jab. Jab, jab, cross, jab. All right. Pretty good. Pretty good. So hopefully you're able to keep pace on those. That's pretty fast movement. Right? Let's keep moving on to the next part of class. For this punching drill, you're going to want to have either a ball or a stuffed animal. And we're going to be talking about one of the most common challenges people run into when they're practicing their punches. They don't realize where their other hand is, right? So for a lot of people, they think they're keeping their kind of guard hand up, right? They go to punch and like, Sensei Jeff, look, I can keep my hand up by my face. Did you see how my hand's by my face? Right? They do that over and over again. Right? Now you probably, if you were watching, you saw that my hand went whoop, like that. It's super common. Super common. I mean like most students do it. Right? Especially if they try and challenge themselves to go faster. Start moving their arms. Right? And that's normal. When you run, your arms move. Hopefully you know that. Right? So one of the things we do to test that is we just try and hold something like a ball or a stuffed animal against our face, but without grabbing it. Right? So you can see how I'm grabbing it. That's cheating, okay? You wanna make a fist and then just pinch it against your head lightly, right? So if I move my hand, it falls, okay? And that will be your hint that you moved your hand if you feel it fall or move, right? So we're just gonna be doing a jab. Set yourself up in a fighting stance, right? Your lead hand should be free. Your back hand, right? You just try and pinch this against your face. And again, I'm trying not to grab it. I'm just making a fist right next to it, right? Don't let your fingers grab, right? Otherwise, it becomes wildly easy, okay? So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna just do our step in our jab and we're gonna recover back, All right? We'll do a few slow ones, right? One, step, and recover. Two, three, four, five. Now, hopefully you didn't drop it. If you did, you might wanna pause this and do it again <laughs> because if you dropped it on the slow ones, you're gonna have a hard time as we go faster, right? So what we're gonna do now is do the same idea. We're just gonna punch a little bit faster. Ready, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, let's switch our legs. So we're gonna switch hands as well, okay? Staying nice and easy, nice and slow. Pinch it, but don't grab it, right? Starting with our jab, ready, and one, Two, three, four, five. Now, another little thing about this, make sure your head is normal. Don't do this thing or this thing. Right? I had some people like, so say, I can do it. They're just holding it on their head, They're letting gravity do the work. No, you gotta keep your hand here. Right? Gravity's a good thing to let work, but yeah, it's not gonna help you learn how to punch if you're leaning your head weirdly one way or the other. Keep that head up, right? So we're gonna do 10, I gotta fix that. Ready? And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good. Okay. Now, one last little thing about this before we go to the final round. You can see, and now, now I'm holding it kind of wrong, it's not touching my shoulder, right? If I let this fall down to here, right, it's just kind of resting on my shoulder like a parrot or something. I feel like a pirate now. We don't want that, okay? We want to keep it up on our face. Okay, so we're switching legs. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna just move a little bit in the fighting stance. Right, so I'm in my fighting stance and I can move forward a little bit, I can move back a little bit, I can go sideways. I want you to try and keep yourself, actually, you know what? 
You can face whatever way you want. You want to turn around? That's fine, right? Because you're going to be listening for me when I say jab. When I say jab, as you're moving around, if I say jab, you throw your jab. And if you're turning, jab, just like that. So maybe you want to start facing towards the screen, right? And we go jab, boom. And maybe you turn towards the sofa. And you're like, take that sofa, right? And then you're moving around, right? So let's get started for realsies this time. Fighting stance, move. Look alive, right? You can move forward, you can get closer to the screen, but don't get too close that you break it. Jab, right? You can move back, move sideways, like, you can't even see me, I left, guys. Jab, there's my jab. Move around, good. Going the other way. Jab, boom. Now don't go take a nap on the couch or something silly like that. Keep that hand up. Jab, still moving in a fighting stance. And you can see, my hands are up. Jab. My feet are moving as I throw my jab. 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 Good. Okay, stop. Let's switch sides. I actually started to slip on me. I felt it slip. It might slip a little bit on you. If you do, you know, fix it and get back to it. Here we go. Same idea. Hands up. Got this pinched. Fighting stance. Move around. All right? And you have to turn. Jab. Backwards. Jab. Jab. Face whichever direction you want. As long as you don't break anything, don't punch the window. Jab. That would be bad. Jab. Don't punch the cat. If your cat is this big, though, you definitely don't want to make that cat angry. Jab. It's like a giant cat. Oh, congratulations. You have a leopard in your house. Jab. Oh, I can feel it starting to slip. May I have to fix it in a minute. Jab. It's going to slip sometimes. Jab. When it does, Fix it, put it back up there. All right, keep going. Maintain that fist. Jab. Good, and jab. Good. Okay, so like I was saying, it's super important that you have the ability to keep your defensive hand up, right? That guard hand up. As you throw something like a jab or any of your punches, right? You can practice with other punches if you like, but otherwise, we're going to keep moving on to the next part of class. So all this month we're talking about composure, right, which is being able to stay calm, make good decisions under pressure, right? And lately we've been talking about kind of instant pressure, right, where someone really quickly says to you, hey, I need you to do this, and you got one minute, right? Or I'm going to punch you, and you better do yourself defense before my punch lands, okay? And that's a very quick pressure, and, and you know, we're learning to deal with that. It's important pressure to, to learn how to deal with. But there's another pressure. Right? It's kind of slow building pressure that we also have to learn how to handle, right? And that could be a couple different things. It could be waiting a long time to get a strike, right? The higher belt you are, the more tolerance for delayed gratification you have to have, the more you have to be able to wait to get what you want, right? Right now, maybe you had to change your lifestyle in the first couple days. We're like, hey, it's kind of fun. You know, I don't have to go to school, right? This is awesome. And then you're, after a couple days, you're like, I kind of kind of want to go to school. <laughs> I kind of want to see my friends. This is this is not as much fun as I thought it was gonna be, right? Or gee, mom, I'm sick of looking at my iPad. And your mom for years kept saying to you, "Stop looking at your iPad. Pay attention to something else." But now you got to stare stare at your iPad or your laptop, right? So that pressure builds over time, and the things that you know you, maybe you could tolerate, they become harder to do, right? And the thing is, it's really important to learn this ability and to develop this ability, right? Because most of the best things in life are hidden behind long waits, right? You don't get them in one day. It's not like going to the candy store and just buying candy. No, you got to take some time to earn things, whether it become becoming a black belt or building great friendships or, or a life that's meaningful in some way. I don't know. It takes time. Graduating from school, it doesn't happen in a week, kids. Don't be surprised about that one. Right? So when you're starting to feel that pressure, there are a couple things that I would recommend to you in terms of being able to stay calm, break it up. One, talk to people. Right? In particular, talk to people who maybe are going through the same thing or who have gone through the same thing as you. Right? So if you're having a hard time with something like waiting so long to get your strike, talk to someone who knows. Talk to an instructor. Right? Talk to a higher belt and be like, hey, did you have to wait a long time? They're like, yeah, I had to wait a long time too. That's fine. 
right? Or no, you know, maybe you need to do this so you can get it faster, right? Uh, so that's one thing. Second thing, try and change up your routine a little bit, right? So if you're feeling the pressure of every day, I've got to go into the living room and I've got to watch my Zoom school class, it's a nightmare. Try changing it up, right? Maybe you don't go to the living room. Maybe you can do it outside one day, right? Maybe you can do it, I don't know, in the dining room, in the kitchen. I don't know what your house is like, but pick something just to change it up a little bit, right? And if you're having a kind of a tough moment where you really feel like, I can't stay focused, right? Change things that maybe you need to go outside, take a few deep breaths of fresh air and the sunlight, right? Stay out there for five minutes and then come back refreshed, right? So those kind of like little mid-set breaks are super important for being able to tolerate, you know, as you're as your kind of composure is starting to falter and recognize that and try and avoid like really collapsing of like, you know, I'm just not gonna do school this month, right? I'm done for May, <laughs> right? <laughs> That's no good or, you know what? Uh, I'm just gonna not ever try and get my stripe because it's just too hard or, you know, like if I can't see my friends, it's it, I'm just gonna go and everybody's gonna, we're gonna just do a giant group hug all together, right? That's not such a great idea, right? There are all sorts of things you can do. And like I said, if you're having a hard time with things, Talk to people, right? Talk to your family. Like, oh man, I really miss my friends. What do you think I can do, mom? Right? I really miss my friends. What do you think I should do, dad? Right? Really helpful, really good idea. All right, so everybody, let's keep maintaining our composure and move on to the next part of class together. All right, we got a quick review of a long form to do. So we're gonna go through this pretty fast. Let's get started. This form's got 20 steps, starts right leg roundhouse kick, right leg side kick, step open, left leg roundhouse kick, left leg back step side kick. Turn, go back the other way, left roundhouse, left lead leg side, step open, right round, right back step side. And I go back the other way, roundhouse kick right, left leg spinning side, right leg front, left leg round, right leg spinning hook. Turn, go the other way, roundhouse with your left, spinning back side right, front kick left, roundhouse right, left spinning hook. That's the pattern of kata kick two. Let's break it into pieces. Most of us know that kata kick two is really an extension of kata kick one. So we're not gonna go over those first 10 steps in this video. If you want to, you can watch the kata kick one video, we'll go over the pattern and all that stuff. But for now, let's get work on steps 11 through 20. Starts with a right leg roundhouse kick, then a left leg spin back side kick, land forward and open. All right, we're gonna do that three times together. Here we go. Fighting stance, right leg round, spin back side with your left, land forward and open. Do it again. Ready? Right round, left spinning side, land forward and open one more time. Ready? Right round, left spinning back side. All right. Off to a good start. Let's move on to the next part if you're ready. Otherwise, pause and rewind. All right, section two, really quick. We're going together right now. We start off. Right leg front kick, land forward and open. Then left leg roundhouse kick, land forward and closed. Then right leg spinning hook kick, land back. All right, we're gonna do that one more time, then we're gonna put those pieces of the form together. In our fighting stance, front kick with your right, right off with your left. Spinning hook with your right. Okay, now we're gonna put the form together. Right off, spinning back side, front round, spinning hook. Here we go, right leg back, if you're running out of room, move back or reset in the middle. Front, up, uh, roundhouse kick. Spinning back side kick. Front kick, roundhouse kick, spinning hook kick. All right, one more time together. Here we go, and roundhouse, spinning back side, front, round, spinning hook. All right, if you need to practice that some more, Go ahead and pause this, otherwise, you gotta keep moving. Section three, it's like section one on the other side. Roundhouse, spinning back, side kick, let's do it. Fighting stance, left leg and back this time. Roundhouse kick, land closed. Spinning back, side kick, land open. All right, we're doing that again, ready? Fighting stance, roundhouse kick. Spinning back, side kick. One more time, ready? Roundhouse kick, spinning back, side kick. Good, all right, let's keep moving. Got a lot, lot to do. Section four, 
It's like section two on the other side in our fighting stance. Left leg and back, front kick, forward and open, roundhouse kick, forward and closed, spinning hook kick, land back. There you go. Let's do it again one more time. Ready? Left leg front, right leg round, right spinning hook, or left spinning hook. Ha ha! I tricked you! Or did I? I don't know. We'll find out. Let's put them together. So, we're doing steps 16 through 20. So start with your left leg and back, roundhouse kick, spinning back side kick, front kick, roundhouse kick, spinning hook kick, land back. Okay, we're going again. One more time, a little fast. Ready, roundhouse, spin side, front kick, roundhouse, spinning hook. There we go. Let's go to the last round. All right, showtime. We're gonna do steps 11 through 20. Steps one through 10, that's kind of kick one. You can watch that video when you want. We're going, put your right leg in back. Get in a fighting stance. Let's go right roundhouse kick. Left spinning back side kick. Right front kick. Left roundhouse. Right spinning hook. Turn around. Left round. Right spinning back side. Left front. Right round. And then left spinning hook. Okay. Hopefully you got it. Now, without me showing you, set yourself up, be ready. Right round, land forward. Left spinning back side, land forward. Right front, land forward. Left round, land forward. Right spinning hook, land back. Just turn around, ready? Left round, land forward. Right spinning back side, land forward. Oh, left front. <laughs> right round. Left spinning hook, right? If you need some more time to practice, pause this, rewind, whatever you need to. Great job. Let's keep moving ahead. So let's get started on our cone tap kicks and sprawl kick kicks. Um, <clears throat> when we're doing this, I'm gonna be doing this kind of like a, a medium maintainable speed, right? Um, your goal is to be faster than me and to finish before me, right? Really, as we're doing this for our black belt, we need to be able to do this fast and you should be able to do higher numbers, right? So maybe you're gonna be doing, instead of 18 on the cone tap kicks, you'll be 21 or 24, right? If you're finishing before me, excellent. Next time, maybe pick that higher numbers that do 21, do 24 instead of doing 18, right? If you're just keeping up with me, especially for lower belts who are watching this video, that's cool, right? So we're doing cone tap kick, get yourself ready, right foot is up, deep breath, Get ready. Let's do it. I'm gonna be going for eighteen. I got 18 in. If you're ready, you're on sprawl kick kicks. If you're not, keep going. I'll get started. I'll do this one a little slow. Down, back, get up, kick, kick. Keep breathing. This gets tired. Make sure your kicks are getting up. Make sure you're behind. It's getting down. You can keep up with me. Great. If you're faster than me, better. <laughs> if you're done, get started. Cone tap kicks the other side. 
if you're not done, keep going until you are. Remember, doing 22. Get to 22. Okay, if you're done, contact kids. If not, keep going. You can always pause this. I'm getting too far ahead. Okay, on the legs up. 18, go. Make sure both hands touch. I'm only putting one hand on, that's cheating. Lost oh, my balance, that's bad. That's done. All right, round two, let's do it. Ready, set, go. Okay, I'm done with those. If you're still finishing up, great. Otherwise, 22 sprawl kick kicks, go. Maintain your form. Great to be fast. But you gotta do it right. Getting harder in the second round. That's okay. Maybe more for you. Maybe you're already done. If you're done, other side. Go and tap kicks. Finish strong. Whew. Bad one.
All right. Two rounds down. Good job. Let's keep moving to the next part of class. All right, today we're going to work on one of the more common problems people run into when they do kata kick to, which is as they do the form in the, in the second half, which round house kick, spinning back, side kick, then front round, they lose their balance after the spinning back side kick. And the major reason why they lose their balance is because they don't control where they land well, right? They just kind of like throw their leg and overextend or they underextend. And it makes the form really, really challenging and tricky to do. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna do a little practice, a simple drill that will help you with that. And we're gonna use a box to kind of just kind of force ourselves to maintain proper footwork and distancing. So the way you're going to do this is you're going to start with your right foot in the box. Okay, and you might just want to watch the first one. I'm going to do a roundhouse kick with my right foot like we do in the form. I'm going to land forward. I'm going to do a spinning back side kick with my left leg. Once I land here, I'm going to turn around, and I'm going to do the exact same kicks going the other way. It's on left and right, but you get the idea. Do my left leg roundhouse kick, and then I do my right leg spinning back side kick, and I want to land right into the box. Now, what I'm forcing myself to do here is be consistent in how much of a stride I have between my kicks, right? So sometimes I see people throw a kick and they do their first roundhouse kick like this. And their feet are practically together. And the next time they do their roundhouse kick, they're all the way out here, right? And that makes it so difficult for you to be able to go through the combination, right? You want to land in a position where your feet are under you and under control. So, how are we going to practice that? By just doing this back and forth. Right leg does the roundhouse, left leg does spinning back side kick. You turn and you go back the other way. And what you want to be able to do is land in the box and kind of like that game of operation, right? You don't want to touch the sides of the box, right? So the smaller the box you have, or basket or bucket or whatever you're using, the harder this is to do. I have kind of a medium sized one, right? So let's get started. You're going to put your right foot in, put your left foot out. Like the hokey pokey, right? Next, we'll shake all about. In <laughs> your fighting stance, go right leg roundhouse kick, land forward. Be aware of like how far you step. Now, left leg spinning back side kick, land, and now you're gonna go back. Left leg roundhouse kick, land, spinning back side kick, land. Oh, I touched the edge of the box a little bit. Oh, the red nose goes off. All right, so we're just gonna keep doing that. You can go at your pace. I can go at my pace. Land, land, okay, just keep going. More practice makes you more better. My English teacher didn't tell me that. That's not true, but that's okay. Ooh, lost my balance a little bit, caught me. Is it gonna happen to you? It happens to me. I'm gonna scoot a little bit so I'm not on the edge. Ha. Land. Ha. Ha. Land. Now, if you're getting dizzy, slow down and pause the video. If you're not, keep going. Two. Land. One. Two. Land. Woo! I am getting dizzy. <laughs> I don't get to pause the video, though. What's up with that? One. Two. Land. One. Two. Land. Okay. So you can practice that as many times as you feel like you need to. A good goal for yourself, try and get it so you can land in the box without touching the edge three times in a row. If you can, you're doing a great job. Pause the video as much as you need to to be able to get that to happen. Otherwise, we're gonna keep moving on to the next part of class. <clears throat> All right. Four. Our final game today, we're going to need some kind of a box. You can use a laundry basket, you can use a bucket, you can use a cardboard box. The bigger it is, the easier it is. I got something kind of medium, okay? And we're just gonna put it down on the ground thusly. Right, maybe a little farther away. And then I'm gonna have something. Your something could be anything. It could be a stuffed animal, it could be a ball. Stuffed animal is probably the easiest one, um, but yeah, you get to pick. Now, this, this game you can make as hard or as easy as you want. 
You can make it harder by using a smaller box or by standing farther away. You can make it easier by standing very close to a very large box. Right? This is an extremely easy version of the game. I'm right here. Right? And what we need to do is we're going to take our thing, right? the stuffed animal or the, yeah, the ball right now. This is the stuffed animal I'm using. Yes, watch out. He's coming to get you. Anyway, you've got to punch this thing and send it flying into that thing. Right? Now, that ain't easy. Right? Your goal, toss it up, punch. Oh, I missed. If I miss, I cry about it for at least an hour. Right? Then, once I've regained my composure, I go and I try again. You can skip the crying for an hour part if you want. Personally, I'm going to take a break. Okay, I've had a minute, I've pulled myself together. Well, it was more than a minute. It was closer to an hour. But that's not important. What is important is now we get to play. Remember, every time you get to punch the thing into the other thing, you get one point. I want you to keep track of points. You get one minute to get as many points as you can. If you pick something really hard, you're standing far away from a small box, you might only get one or two. I mean, I get any. Right? If you're using a big box or an inch away from, you may get like a hundred. I don't know if 100 something you're proud of it. Basically, you made something really, really easy. It's like, you know, picking a fight with a toddler. You're always going to win, right? At least I hope you always win. All right? So we're going for one minute. On your mark. Get set. Go. Ah, missed. So I try again. I've gotten, become much stronger now. I don't cry after every single miss. One point. I did it. So I keep playing. Because I want to get more than one point. Because one point is boring. Hmm. I may end up with one point, but that's okay. We keep playing for a minute. Try and get it into the box. Way too hard. We don't want that. Keep trying. Never give up. Ah! Time's almost up. Be quick. We have about 20 seconds. That was a terrible one. I don't feel good about that one at all. Hmm. Just a bit outside. But it's not eager when I need him. Ah! We just keep playing for a minute. Time's almost up though. No! Too hard! Oh, time's up. I only got one point. Hopefully you got more. But if you didn't, you picked a good challenge. Alright everybody, great job. Look forward to seeing you next time. Oh.